Good morning. It's, uh, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you very much. So yes, I am uh, work at New Relic. I anchor the groups that build our internal compute fabric and core service infrastructure. And I'm interested in talking about scaling. And scaling is very sexy stuff, but actually, that's not what I want to talk about. I'm interested in talking about some of the challenges that come with scaling systems and also growing organizations. So when we talk about scale, there are really a couple different aspects of it. Um, so first of all, there's scale in the traditional sense. Uh, these numbers represent the workload that the New Relic platform is handling every minute of every hour of every day, 365 days a year. And these are what we technically call pretty big numbers. But behind these big numbers, there are actually another set of numbers that represent scale. So the New Relic platform is comprised of more than 200 different services that work together to deliver our functionality. Um, we've got more than two petabytes of SSD storage. We have over 40 teams that are doing dozens of production releases a week. And this is scale in the sense of complexity, organizational complexity. And the issue with scale in both of these senses is that typically more scale means more friction. As your scale grows, the issues that come up become more visible and more problematic for your organization. And as your complexity grows, there are more and more interdependencies between components, more and more potential points of breakage, more things that can go wrong that you need to think about. So it's easy to get into this really negative cycle where the, th the things that are forcing you to scale and your past work that you've done to scale actually makes it harder and harder to scale in future. So I'd like to touch on some of the processes we put in place and some of the lessons that we've learned at New Relic that have let us scale without sacrificing velocity or quality. And I want to start with a quick history lesson. So um, this graph represents New Relic's web traffic. The blue stripe down at the bottom is traffic from our first product, APM monitoring. Then in 2011, we rolled out our second product, which is real user monitoring. So with this product, instead of just monitoring our customers' app servers, now we're monitoring our customers' customers and their interactions in their browsers. And traffic from that second product is represented by the red stripe. And as we rolled it out, traffic from this product pretty quickly outgrew our original APM traffic. And with that scale, we started to see real problems in terms of the performance of our systems. And we knew that even as we were seeing those issues, where we were was just the beginning of even further growth. So this brings us to our first lesson that we've really tried to internalize, which is that nothing lasts forever. No matter how beautiful the architecture, at a certain point, it just doesn't work anymore. And you have to accept the fact that incremental changes aren't going to cut it. So the question is, well, when that happens, what do you do? Well, the approach we take at New Relic is experiments. We don't believe that we can come up with the right answer on a whiteboard. The job of reality is to be more real than you expect it to be, right? So we, until something that we've drafted up actually meets reality, it's just a hypothesis. And so when we run an experiment, we try and be very explicit about it. You know, we document the hypothesis, what it is we're trying to achieve, how we're going to measure it, what our success criteria are, and how we're going to evaluate it. And in this case, the experiment that we decided to run was that of horizontally scaling our data collection systems by adding a lot more collectors, a lot more databases, and a proxy tier to fan out the traffic. So here, you can see that experiment starting. The yellow stripe represents the proxy tier. And unfortunately for us, it turned out that this experiment didn't work very well. We discovered that actually by horizontally scaling our systems, we'd horizontally scaled our points of failure. Oops. So we rolled back the experiment. And this actually brings us to the corollary of lesson two, which is that experiments, it turns out, don't always work. And that's why it's really important to keep in mind that an experiment is exactly that. Uh, it's not a solution that you're trying to force into place. It's a hypothesis. And being able to walk away from that hypothesis if it doesn't work out well is a really good thing. But with good experimental design, even apparent failures can teach you something very valuable. In this case, what it taught us is that our problem wasn't horizontal scaling. It was synchronous calls in our data pipeline. And this let us construct our next experiment, which was building a new, totally async, message-driven data pipeline 
um, which uses Kafka as a distributed message broker. And here, you can see us rolling it out. The new pipeline is represented by the yellow stripe up at the top. And this experiment was quite successful. So in September, we rolled it out across the board. And having proven it here, we decided, OK, this is an architecture we can generalize. We can roll this out more fully. And here, you can see what that full rollout looks like. And you'll notice that there are now a lot of new colors appearing on this graph pretty close to the same time. And those represent new components rolled out by different teams. And this brings us to the next lesson, which is that good architecture supports change. For us, this is really a key criteria when we're looking at a proposal for a new architecture. So when we initially rolled out our changes, we used an incremental approach to test out our new systems. By building our new systems to expose the same API as our old systems, we could use our load balancer cluster to incrementally shift load over a few accounts at a time, test it back, out, move it back if it didn't work out the way we were hoping. Well, this is cool. But now, with this new message-driven architecture, we have even more ways of experimenting. And this is one of the things we love about this architecture. So you can see on this diagram, there are two browser data consumers. There's the in-production consumer, and there's a new consumer with a dotted outline. Well, using Kafka, we can roll out new components that actually access our full production traffic load, deal with that load, and see how it's working before we put it in the critical path that our customers see. So the move to message-driven, it not only solved our immediate problems, it actually really increased our experimental abilities. And the takeaway from this is that technology choices actually have cultural impact. If you've got a culture where teams are forced into lockstep changes, there's no amount of engineering talent in the world that's going to add up to velocity. By moving to a message-driven architecture, we decoupled our teams. We let our teams become more autonomous, run faster, and iterate on their own. Now, this is really great, but that's only half the battle. Because if you have teams that are autonomous and that are running on their own, you need to make sure that everyone's running in more or less the same direction, that everyone has the same goals in mind. And what that really means is everyone having skin in the same game. So at New Relic, we want to make sure that everyone has a sense of responsibility and ownership, not only on how their systems behave in pre-production, but in production as well. If your bad code is waking someone else up at 2 AM, it's hard to have a lot of urgency about fixing it. And this is why we have teams own their own deploys, build their own runbooks, handle their own on-call schedules. But of course, with this sort of setup, it's really important to make sure people can be successful. So we've invested quite a lot in infrastructure to make sure that happens. Um, that includes things like self-serve deploy tools. Uh, we have a gatekeeper system. So if a team wants to schedule a deploy, gatekeeper will check all of the dependencies of their service, make sure everything is clear, there's not an emergency running, before it lets the deploy roll ahead. So teams can make their own deploy decisions. We embed site reliability engineers with all of our teams to provide DevOps expertise. And we also provide training. Training is really important. If, if you do get woken up at 2 AM, hopefully it doesn't happen once in a while, it does. We want to make sure that you're not trying to scramble at that point to figure out, oh, how do I get support? How do I escalate the issue? All of these things are part of the training that we make sure that teams go through. Now, in addition to this sort of support, the other thing that ends up being really important is having deep visibility into systems and deep visibility into the components that you're owning. And it turns out that we have a handy tool that we use to provide that visibility across the board. Um, we use New Relic at New Relic to monitor all of our systems. And in fact, we built New Relic to address exactly the sorts of concerns that we've seen scaling and evolving a complex system. So in addition to baseline monitoring, we use New Relic to track deploys across all of our platform down to the code level and particular changes that have rolled out. Um, we also make really heavy use of custom insights events. So custom insights events are an incredibly versatile tool. We use them to do things like monitor our network traffic flows or the internals of our Cassandra clusters. The fact that insights is such a flexible tool is what makes it really powerful. Now, 
engineers just need to learn one tool that they can apply in all of these different ways and get visibility into these diverse data sets all in one place. We even use, we even use insights events to monitor our processes, things like number of pages or number of releases. Now, the biggest takeaway for us, though, is that ultimately evolution of systems never ends. Change is the one constant for us. So looking back over the history of New Relic, this is more or less how the, our traffic growth has gone. There have been a lot of colors that have come and gone representing changes. And looking at a graph like this, it's pretty easy to feel like, oh, okay, we're doing a great job. But the thing we really need to keep in mind is that today's pinnacle is just tomorrow's starting line. That we're gonna look back on this and say, these are the good old days when things were so easy. And we know that our most important job is not just making sure that our systems are succeeding today, but that we're well set up for change, that we're ready to step away from the assumptions that we've had until now, and we have the processes and architecture in place to meet tomorrow's challenges and begin again. Thank you very much.